Hey, it's Liz at Book Learning. I have a Marcus right here because he wants that antler and he's too loud. So we'll see how this goes. I want to do a quick uh, but more serious discussion because of some events that happened over the weekend in Charlottesville. On Saturday evening, it seems like what were some out-of-towners gathered for a neo-confederate KKK-like rally at the statue of Robert E. Lee, which the city council, after a lot of deliberation and, um, you know, democratic hearing processes, um, decided to sell. Currently, there is a six-month injunction against its sale because of people like those that protested, but the recent sale of, or removal of some Confederate era statues from New Orleans um, provides a promising foundation for Charlottesville being able to uh, rededicate this park to someone a little less controversial given all of the uh, racial issues that surround the Civil War. I'm trying to be diplomatic here. <laughs> so, Saturday night, neo-Confederate rally uh, around the statue, which will probably eventually be up for sale, um, shouting things like, uh, blood and soil, um, Russia, is our f Russia is our friend, irritating to say the least and the next day Charlottesville citizens gathered around the statue for a peace vigil in response and it was all sorts of people um, black and white immigrant and native like whatever born in America. You know what I mean. I'm not talking about, I mean, maybe there were some Native Americans there, but blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, they gathered around for a peace vigil, providing a, a stark contrast in terms of the torches that were held on Saturday night and the candles that were held on Sunday night. So this drama has been unfolding for quite some time in Charlottesville and I've thought about it for a while so this latest thing really made me wonder what would Robert E. Lee think? One of the big arguments um, on the pro-sale side, the pro-rededication side is that Robert E. Lee wouldn't have wanted the statue of himself anyway. Robert E. Lee is a, is a very important character in the Civil War for the South because, you know, he stuck to his convictions uh, even though he lost. And I, my parents are from the North, but I was born and raised in the South. And growing up in school, our... He was either our valedictorian or our salutatorian. I can't remember. It doesn't matter to me. Um, so this very, very smart guy who I consider to be a good close friend. Um, one of the things that bothered me uh, was I can't tell if he was joking when he called the Civil War the War of Northern Aggression. I mean... It's been a while, guys, since the Civil War happened. I think it's time to move on. Maybe? <laughs> so Robert E. Lee has serves this important role in the Southern... Oh, another dog. Yes, your ball is great. Your ball is great. Um, Robert E. Lee serves a very important role in um, the Southern mindset around the Civil War and this great um, loss of pride 
should we say. Um, but he's also serving as an important um, point in the argument against, the, uh, in the argument for removing the statue because of who he was. So who Robert E. Lee is, is that is somewhat at the center of this logical debate. The emotional debate is certainly around racism and identity and um, uh, let's call it the changing demographics of America. <laughs> um, all the things that we see expressed in the rise of Donald Trump are like are similarly expressed in the anger around the proposed and past um, uh, removal of this statue. So, the library being right next to Lee Park, I decided to go to the library. Jonathan Horn's book looks more like a book about Washington than Lee, so I'm not going to pick it. Blunt's book is a Penguin Lives book, so I think it's good. It's really short compared to some of the biogra biographies on this shelf. But uh, the author was born in Georgia, so Southern Pride, and served in the military, so he should have some sense of what that means in practice. Um, I think I'll get this one. I am glad I just went to the gym to hold this book up at arm's length. Boom. And right there, that is all the critical apparatus, as Steve Donahue loves to call it. So Elizabeth Brown Pryor's gigantic biography of Robert E. Lee looks really amazing, but looks way out of my league for what I currently know about Robert E. Lee, which is next to nothing uh, except for the grace of a Virginia public school education. Uh, so while it looks like it's going to be really good, I don't think it should be my first pick. I'm starting to get excited about reading about Robert E. Lee, having just read about Abraham Lincoln because Lee was Lincoln's first choice for the Union Army and he got rejected. <laughs> this is a short, short biography of Robert E. Lee written by Woodrow Wilson. Wilson's presidential um, presidential library is I want to say in Lexington or Staunton, Virginia can't remember which off the top of my head I'm not going to read this one because Wilson was raised as Dazzle you gotta love an early 20th century table of contents pretty much tells you the story Bradford's because again with like with Elizabeth Brown Pryor's book I think it's just a little bit out of my league for how much I know about Lee already so looks like this tiny one is it because I had a very limited time to spend in the library right now I hope that wasn't too boring for you <laughs> um, 
I so here it is the book that I picked up from the library I had a couple of minutes um, before uh, I had to go get my car tickets blah 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 um, but it's it's very short it is husband came home let's see uh, it was around 200 pages and it's again it's part of a series called Penguin Lives um, and it has oh it's less than 200 pages it's about 150 pages about Robert E. Lee and then there are three appendices that provide further information about different aspects uh, speculation, Lee's humor, and Lee's attitude towards slavery, and then a bibliography. So it should be a pretty short book. I can't catch a break today. <laughs> uh, bye guys. Hey, welcome back. It's Liz at Book Learning, and of course Marcus. <laughs> No, Marcus, you can't have the antler. I just took it away from you because you're too loud. <laughs> Marcus. <sighs> just be quiet. Just be quiet. Put it right down. Yes, very good. <laughs> 